The times, they are changing by Bob Dylan. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermin Sheikh. Top secret documents leaked by Edward Snowden have revealed new details about how the United States and Britain targeted the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks after it published leaked documents about the Afghan war. According to a new article written by Glenn Greenwald and Ryan Gallagher, published this morning by The Intercept, Britain's top spy agency, the Government Communications Headquarters, or GCHQ, secretly monitored visitors to a WikiLeaks site by collecting their IP addresses in real time, as well as the search terms used to reach the site. One of the documents leaked by Edward Snowden details a manhunting timeline that shows how the U.S. tried to pressure other nations to prosecute Julian Assange. One read, quote, the United States on August 10th urged other nations with forces in Afghanistan, including Australia, United Kingdom and Germany, to consider filing criminal charges against Julian Assange. Joining us now is Michael Ratner. Uh, he is the president emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights, which is the legal advisor to Julian Assange. Uh, so talk about this last point, Michael. Um, first, what you're most surprised by in this piece that just came out at The Intercept, and particularly uh, the U.S. pushing other countries to prosecute Julian. Well, what I was really shocked by was the extent the U.S. and U.K. have gone through to try and get and destroy WikiLeaks um, and Julian Assange and their network of supporters. I mean, it's astounding, and it's been going on for years. And it also, as Julian pointed out, um, tells us why he is in the Ecuadorian embassy and why Ecuador has given him asylum. He has every reason to heavily fear um, what would happen to him in this country, in the United States, uh, if he were to um, be ever taken here. So I think, for me, that's a very, very critical point, justifies every reason why Ecuador uh, gave him asylum. And the document you're addressing, Amy, uh, what they call the manhunt timeline, which is extraordinary, because it groups him among, you know, a whole bunch of people who the U.S. considers, you know, terrorists. It also, interestingly, groups them, groups them among Palestinians, uh, which, which is pretty interesting in itself. But to have Julian on that list as a manhunt timeline, and it says prosecute him wherever you can get him, um, is pretty extraordinary. It doesn't say you necessarily need a good reason to prosecute him. It just says basically prosecute him. And what it's reminiscent to me is of the program that took place in this country in the 60s and the 70s, COINTELPRO, counterintelligence procedures, when the FBI said we have to basically destroy the black civil rights movement, uh, the new left and others, and prosecute them, get them however you can. Get rid of them. And so the manhunt timeline, even its name is chilling, uh, but that's what it is. It's an effort to try and get WikiLeaks and their personnel wherever they are in the world. And of course, we've seen some of that. Uh, you've had people on this show, uh, when people cross borders who are associates with WikiLeaks, uh, they get stopped, they get surveilled all the time. Uh, you've, we've seen We've seen efforts to take, to basically destroy WikiLeaks by stealing their laptops on a on a trip that went from uh, Sweden uh, to Germany. Uh, we've seen efforts across the board in country after country. Germany, they surveil conferences uh, when WikiLeaks people speak there. Everywhere. So actually, this program is not just an abstraction. This program has been implemented, and the manhunt timeline, I think, is incredibly significant, uh, considering that the manhunt is an effort to locate. Uh, find uh, and destroy, um, in some cases, kill, uh, kill people. And Michael Ratner, what do you think the appropriate response uh, should be to something like that? Is there any legal action that uh, Assange's legal team can take in response to this? Um, Julian Assange, in his statement to the article, uh, said that he felt that the U.S. ought to appoint a special prosecutor, uh, not just to investigate what's happening to WikiLeaks uh, and a publisher uh, and journalist, but across the board, what's happening to publishers and journalists in this entire country right now and around the world, where the U.S. is trying uh, to basically say publishing is a crime. And that's what they're saying. That's what the Obama administration is saying. And he's, Julian and, uh, is strongly suggesting, and I support, the idea of a special prosecutor to look into this. Is that aspect of it unprecedented, though? I mean, you drew uh, comparisons between Quintel Pro and the Manhunt timeline, but the fact that publishing people who work in journalism are being monitored in this way by intelligence agencies here, has that occurred before? I, on this level, I don't think it's occurred. On this extreme level, you had the Manhunt program. You also had what they call it, they call it the girl, the anti-crisis girl program, and that's a, the drag, I don't know why it got Excellent. that name. Anti-crisis girl program. What, does, what is that about? I mean, I don't know, except what it is, is whenever I search for WikiLeaks on my computer, 
or when I go visit the WikiLeaks site, in real time, the GCHQ, the British Intelligence Agency, can take in my IP address, take in what I'm searching for in real time. Now, they gave an ex they, they, they did a, bunch, a number of slides showing how they could do this. We don't know how extensively they've implemented that program, but that means that every one of us who've ever gone to a WikiLeaks site to look for a document could technically um, be, be surveilled and our our IP address taken in. Also, the hacktivist group Anonymous and Pirate Bay. Explain. Well, uh, Anonymous, they actually did designate as what they call a, for a malicious foreign actor. And a malicious foreign actor, which is what they were deciding whether to designate WikiLeaks as or not, and we don't know what the final decision was, uh, whether but WikiLeaks was designated as a malicious foreign actor, um, but Anonymous apparently was. And what it means is any restrictions on government surveillance of anything, my conversations, my email, are completely lifted, uh, whether you're an American or whatever. Any, any of my communications to, to anywhere in the world, uh, to that website, uh, to Anonymous, uh, going on chat rooms with Anonymous, going on tweets with Anonymous, those can be taken in and surveilled. Uh, it's an incredibly broad power. Uh, we don't know, as I said, if it was used against WikiLeaks. It was certainly discussed, and they asked to use it against WikiLeaks. Um, we will know, I hope, soon, if and when uh, a lawsuit is ever filed around these issues. And what do the documents reveal about what the U.S. officials said they were doing and what, in fact, they were doing? Because not only was their surveillance of U.S. citizens problematic, but also of foreign citizens. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following the question exactly. I mean, I mean. In other words, uh, Michael Ratner, the uh, U.S. officials have claimed that they only surveil uh, foreign, oh. uh, foreign citizens who are, in some sense, either potentially yeah. guilty of or likely to be involved in terrorist activities. If the, but if you're monitoring every visitor to a yeah. website, whether it's WikiLeaks or Pirate Bay, or, or not, I mean, that's obviously not You know, this is just obfuscation and lies uh, by our officials, which has been consistent. Obviously, if there's a WikiLeaks website overseas, what they're really saying is everybody who visits that website, American or otherwise, we can surveil. Um, so it's complete, it's complete BS. This is just untrue. We are all being surveilled. Michael, we want to, you to stay with us as we bring in another guest um, from London. You know what I mean? Four journalists who revealed the National Security Agency's vast web of spying have been awarded the 2013 George Polk Awards in Journalism. Glenn Greenwald, Laura Poitras, Ewan McCaskill of The Guardian, and Barton Gelman of The Washington Post were among the winners announced on Sunday. Even as the journalists who broke the stories based on Snowden's leaks were awarded one of journalism's highest honors, a lawyer who represents Snowden was detained while going through customs at London's Heathrow Airport. Jesslyn Radak told Firedog Lake she was subjected to, quote, very hostile style questioning about Snowden and her trips to Russia. Radak also learned she might be on an inhibited persons list, a designation reportedly used by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to require further vetting of certain passengers. After the Polk Awards were announced, Glenn Greenwald tweeted, quote, in the U.K. government, this is known as the George Polk Award for Excellence in Terrorism. Jesslyn Radak is just one of a growing number of people who are being stopped, harassed, and interrogated for their work around Edward Snowden. WikiLeaks and National Security Agency documents. In this clip, we hear from journalist Laura Poitras, computer security researcher Jacob Applebaum, and then journalist Glenn Greenwald's partner David Miranda, who have all been stomped and interrogated in airports. I've actually lost count to how many times I've been detained at the border, but it's I think around 40 times. And on, on this particular trip, um, lately they've been actually sending someone from the Department of Homeland Security to question me uh, in the departing uh, city. So I was questioned in London about what I was doing. I told them I was a journalist and that, you know, my work is protected and that I wasn't going to discuss it. I was targeted by the U.S. government. And essentially, until the last four times that I've flown, I was detained basically every time. Sometimes men would meet me at the jetway, similarly with guns. I stayed in a room with three different agents. They were entering and exiting. They spoke to me, asking me questions about my whole life. They took my computer, my video game, cell phone, everything. That was journalist Glenn Greenwald's partner, David Miranda, before him, computer security researcher Jacob Applebaum and journalist Laura Poitras. Um, you can go to our website to see our interview with Jacob Applebaum and Laura Poitras at democracynow.org. But all of the